Welcome back, Manhattan Preschool Admissions. Judgment ensues and the story unfolds from there. I'm excited to speak about what feels like a very important film in 2018, without a doubt, at this film festival of Sundance. The film is called A Kid Like Jake, and I'm here with its director, Silas Howard. Good morning. Good morning. Nice sir. to see you. Good to see you, too. Great to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I, I try to, to boil these yeah. these introductions down to a way that kind of sets the stage, but also maybe gets to the heart of, okay, wait, we have to talk. And, yeah. and, and I was thinking about reading this phrase, preschool admissions, and then I stopped and I said, preschool admissions. And of course, it's a Manhattan world. Sure. Talk about this sure. project and yeah. about your, your perspective and of course, Daniel Pearl's yeah. piece of work on this meditation. Yeah, so the the movie, A Kid Like Jake, is based on the play by the same name by this brilliant playwright, Daniel Pearl, who also adapted it to a screenplay. Um, it was then optioned by Jim Parsons' company, That's Wonderful, um, and Double Nickel. Um, and uh, they brought on Claire Danes. And so when I was brought the project, Claire and Jim were attached. And I was, yeah, I was blown away by the nuance of the script that it, it it captures how people really talk and and you know starts as one thing but then really becomes just this human story sort of like uh, how the pressures play out with this relationship and this couple um, and I worked with Daniel on some minor changes in the script you know finishing adapting it to a screenplay and uh, it has um, Jim Parsons and Claire Danes play the parents of Jake um, and uh, Octavia Spencer plays the school administrator. Priyanka Chopra um, plays one of their friends and neighbors who's also a mom. Amy Landecker plays a, a, a therapy client of, of Alex, which is, uh, I mean, of Greg, which is um, Jim's character. And, uh, but the world of the movie is really about, you know, it starts with this idea of, of school and this, for me, it, it kind of captures not just a Manhattan world of school, but, you know, the school system, in our country in general is in a really difficult place. And I grew up very working class and I understand what it, where you go to school and how that cumulatively affects your, your chances and how competitive um, everything is, not just in Manhattan, but in, in, our, in our country at large. And, um, but it really is a bit of a bait and switch in that it starts with that kind of competitiveness and the way that we look at our children. And then it goes into a more rich theme, which is like, you know, we, we do live in a world, especially in this country where people are saying, you know, be unique, you know, be unique, stand out from the crowd, be different, and then paradoxically punishes people that are different, you know, from a very early on age. And so this really, I think, you know, um, takes that and looks at parenting a child who's different. In Jake's case, it's that, you know, Jake is, is uh, gender expansive. He do, he's a boy, he loves uh, dresses and fairy tales. He doesn't fit neatly in a box, but he could be any kid. He could be a creative kid. Oh, he could be different in any any number of ways. And for myself, as an out transgender person, it really isn't a story about being LGBTQ necessarily, although that's an important part of it and it is part of the story, but it's also, I like to connect sort of my experience in the world to other people's experience. And that's how we, especially in a time where things are so divided, we can actually connect through the difficulties that we go through. And so for these parents, it's like, how do we protect um, uh, and, and stand by um, those we love and how do we truly see them? And it, it really becomes about that and the way this relationship, the way it, it, it impacts their relationship. Um, and I, I love that because I think that can reach so many people. I was just talking to a woman and you know, she's like, oh yeah, my, my kid's 14 at school and going through these challenges. And so, um, yeah, I think it, it becomes this sort of hopeful way of, of, of dealing with those subjects at, um, person to person instead of in these you know, sort of divided ways of talking about it. In this, this time in which, as you say, be yourself mm -hmm. uh, and, and toggling back and forth between the being yeah. and then 
the judging, the categorizing. I, I've been thinking a lot about terms and terminology. Yes. You use gender expansive. I yes. really like that a lot. I learned that from Glad Media. I mean, I have to go and learn. And Priyanka Chopra talks about this a lot. And we did a press day. And she really, you know, everyone came into this project with their talent and their platform to talk about in a nuanced way these differences. And she was like, people don't know the right word or how, and they don't want to do the wrong thing. Or, or people use that as a reason to sort of push back. And I was like, yeah, I have to go and ask, you know, people, what is the latest? way to sort of be inclusive, be inclusive, and, and let's live in a world where we just try to love more and have less shame. And, but yeah, it's hard, because it's hard to, under, to know what is the right. And, and our movie positions, there isn't a right or wrong. It's just sort of a, you know, a, a, a trying to reach for support. This, this idea of categorizing, and one of the terms that has kind of been sticking with me and not necessarily in a good way, is a gender non-conforming. Sure. Right, there's a, I mean, the, the negative yeah, is yeah. in there. Yeah. But once we get past that further, and it, as, yeah. as you've mentioned already, in, in all of these relationships, when the, the being itself, as opposed to, to the judging and the categorizing, yeah. really becomes the issue for us grown-ups because we have a child who isn't even in preschool yet yeah. every day is a new day so much change so true and and also i think to to reflect upon the fact that we are always changing yes. it may not be as apparent and so we may well. be more um, thoughtful about it or, yeah. or subtle about it and yet is there so much difference between us and of course now comes the 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 crux of the relationship right. between Jim and Claire's characters yeah. and how they're reacting to this yeah. this being who is just being talk about about that progression of the story well, I love that you picked up on that it's like you know here's a child who's just you know learning but children you know I, I'm not a parent um, but I have God kids and I'm just so you know it gets primal so quick when there's someone you feel you need to protect and then there's a slippery slope of like our ideas about ourselves and then putting them into practice and you know once you have someone that you feel responsible for you can't control outside here so it's very easy to try to control you know what what's in your what's in your reach and and you know the, the Ch the child picks up on things. So even though he's so young and figuring out and he doesn't know yet where he's gonna land, if there's a message of shame or don't do this, like that is the, the height of our, you know, of our learning and figuring out who we are and taking cues and, and understanding what's safe. So it's, you know, I think it's, um, we, we intentionally really don't focus on Jake. It's so, we sort of flip the camera because Jake's okay. You know, Jake doesn't have right. a problem, you right. know, and actually our, our actor, Leo, who plays Jake, who's going to be at our screening, is very much like Jake and is so amazing and his parents are so incredible and, I mean, he was on set, we constantly kept learning from him, plus he's just funny and he's got, he's just a, he's just a great little person. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, to, to, to sort of intentionally turn the camera onto the world and the people that have you know that that have control over and and also how you know I'm I'm interested in how like you know we see all these hollywood moments of how people handle things so perfectly and I don't know personally I can never live up to those and so I really right. appreciate when I see people handling things not well and and blame and, and and maybe casting blame when they feel afraid you know and I think if we look at that fear and we look at how we're all afraid and that that can make us sort of not be our best selves and get to the other side of that and that we're still okay like that's that's a journey I'm interested in looking at I, yeah. I, I always get excited when we're in a moment of conversation and, and you're presaging my next question and, and I think kind of one of the, the key things that jumped out to me is this fear as a side of love. Yeah. Yeah. To want to protect, but the desire to protect because of fear, because Jake or any other child will be categorized in these terrible ways yeah. and that that's something that, that be, uh, negotiating between the parents yeah. as characters. Yeah, I think that's such a real thing and I look at it, you know, even in my own family, I have a really supportive family and I've, I've asked a lot of them and I also think that it's, you know, it's easy to say I support this and I support that, but when you're responsible for, for a kid, it's harder, you know, and I, and I think as a person who has, identifies as part of the LGBTQ community, I, I have empathy for how difficult it is for you know, for the people around me and, um, and they support me anyway. And that sometimes even that, that fear out of love thing hasn't come out around my identity, but my choice of like being a film director, which is like a really ridiculous choice to make financially. And you know, I don't come from, you know, Hollywood royalty. And, I, and I've had moments where my family, who supports me endlessly, 
has been like, you know, well, you made this terrible choice, and it's not because they want me to feel bad, but they're afraid. They're afraid. They're upset that I won't be able to. You know, it's out of right. this, out of love, protection. That, yeah, but and, and not, still fear. not a positive thing. Yeah, and so I think, yeah, I think looking at that, it's like we're so, we're all, you know, it's really hard to be a, a human in the world, and especially right now, there's so much, there's so much, to, you know, throwing people, there's so much, <clears throat> there's so many communities under attack, just for the sake of of this crazy administration and and, and distraction and and it's at a big cost and 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 I think it's it's just you know I'm just looking for that connection you know um, through difficult converse you know through you know things that could potentially be difficult within our own reach instead of constantly be pointing over there who, who what are those people doing what are right. those people doing right. um, try to sort of look within and build out you know support within a community that I'm connected to yeah. Let's talk about screenings you still have left for folks who are watching live who are in Park City who may want to snag we, a ticket. We have a premiere, actually, our world premiere is tomorrow at 9.30. Oh, congratulations. At the That's Eccles fantastic. Theater, and then we have a screening 9 in the morning the next day at the Eccles Theater. So I think the first one is sold out, um, but the morning uh, the, the morning on Wednesday is, uh, I'm sure there's tickets still available. available. Yeah, I think there are tickets, and then... And then I think there's a couple more that I can't remember off the top of my head. No worries. We'll send people to the Sundance website where thank all you. the screening information is. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful to meet you. Really Congratulations great. on you. a beautiful film. Thank and you. we'll hope to see you here again. Yes. Fantastic. The film is A Kid Like Jake. The director is Silas Howard from a play by Daniel Pearl. Included in your screening plans Wednesday morning. We'll be right back after this.